As it seems that the coronavirus might not be a thing to MC, ladies and gentlemen, bla 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 Oke, okay. yaudah. Ini gimana? Mau langsung? Berarti udah? Oke, okay. berarti yang di note itu ya, abis MC langsung uh, bumper. Uh, Bismillah ya. Ini berarti udah oke. Okay. Oh, dari sini udah. Yuk.
COVID, the coronavirus might not be the best thing. Pero está atento para no ver los primeros casos en Buenos días, la excelencia de Retno Marsudi, ministro de Relaciones República de presidente de Guatemala, su excelencia Andrés Alamanda Zafala, su excelencia de Chile, su excelencia para el Brasil, su excelencia de la región de la República de Indonesia, incluso Fernando, el ministro de la República de Indonesia, su excelencia Perry Guario, el gobernador de la Banco Central de la República de Indonesia, su excelencia Carolina Arturo la viceministra de Relaciones Exteriores de la República Oriental de Uruguay, His Excellency, Director General for American and European Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, Ambassador Murah Swajaya, Excellencies, Ambassadors of Latin America and the Caribbean in Jakarta, and Ambassadors of the Republic of Indonesia in Latin America and the Caribbean region, Honorables, Heads of Nations of Latin America and the Caribbean in Jakarta, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to the Indonesia, Latin America and the Caribbean or INALAC Business Forum 2020. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the honor to kindly invite the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, Her Excellency Ratno L.P. Marsudi, to deliver her remarks virtually from Nusantara Room at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. The Secretary General of the Central America Integration System, His Excellency Pinacio Cerezo, Ministers, the Governor, uh, uh, Governor, Governor of Central Bank of Indonesia, Excellencies, Ambassadors, Ladies and Gentlemen. Buenos dias, buenos noches to every one of you. Thank you very much for attending the Indonesia, Latin America, and the Caribbean Business Forum 2020. Building from the success of last year forum, I do believe that this forum could play as a catalyst to our efforts in strengthening economic cooperation between Indonesia and countries in Latin America and Caribbean. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, both of our region are still battling against COVID-19 pandemic. As we approach the end of 2020, the virus showed no sign of slowing down. To the contrary, the virus continues to spread at an alarming rate. More than 50 million people around the globe infected by the virus. At the start of the pandemic, it took two months to reach one million cases. And today, eh, it took two days to reach one million cases. A un million de, a million de casos. Y hoy, se and worse, dos... this pandemic unfolds at the back of an increasingly uncertain global situation. 
The IMF recent regional economic report suggests that an escalation in geopolitical tension could pose a threat to our global value chain, create major economic risks, and in turn reduce global growth. Against this backdrop, I have three things to convey. First, we must strengthen the paradigm of collaboration and cooperation. Amid this challenging situation, we have no other option but to put forward cooperation and build back trust to multilateralism. No country, no matter how strong or powerful, can address global challenges by itself. This pandemic has exposed a limit on what each country can do. We must always choose cooperation over competition, dialogue over rivalries, win-win cooperation over zero-sum game. Second, we must recover together. In this difficult situation, the world needs new hope and optimism. We have seen encouraging signs in our path to economic recovery. To add this, to this momentum, we must reconnect our economies and businesses by making use of all available tools at our disposal. From free trade agreements to essential business corridors. I therefore encourage that business representative from our two regions to explore potential, the potential to deepen economic engagement between Indonesia and the Latin America and Caribbean countries. And my third point is that we must set our vision for future cooperation. Our current relation does not reflect our true potential. Our total trade only represents 2% of Indonesia's total trade to the world and only a mere of 0.34% of Latin America and Caribbean's total trade to the world. That means that in order to unlock the real economic potential, we must be able to adapt to new approaches and create breakthroughs. In this regard, I believe that we should now focus on three issues. The first issue is to create more opportunities. And Indonesia stands ready to establish new trade agreement with more LEC countries. I have recently implemented the Indonesia Chile Comprehensive Economic Partnership last year. I believe that this could become a model of trade cooperation with other countries. My second issue, we must also discover new opportunities in digital economy. Indonesia is the fastest growing and largest digital economy in Asia with a predicted value of 133 billion US dollar. The Latin American and Caribbean countries are also a rapid progress in digital connectivity. Indonesia stands ready to develop further cooperation with Latin American and Caribbean countries in digital trade and e-commerce sectors. My last point, finally, we need to institutionalize the INA LSC Business Forum or INALAC Business Forum. The establishment of INALAC Digital Platform is one of the tools to showcase our product, investment opportunities, and updates on the business activities in both regions. And in this connection, I'm very happy that today to launch, we are able to launch this platform at www.inalak.com. I repeat, www.inalak.com.
www.ibsc.com. I do hope that this will be able to cater all your needs to enhance economic cooperation and business interaction in a more effective way. So I wish you a productive and fruitful discussion. I thank you very much. Ambassador Mura Swajaya to deliver his remarks. Yes, friends from Latin America, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Om Swastiastu, Shalom, Namo Buddhaya, Buenos Noches, Good evening to you all in Latin America and the Caribbean region, and Buenos Dias, a very good morning for all of you here in Indonesia. Welcome to the second Indonesia Latin America and the Caribbean Business Forum. Let me extend our most sincere appreciation to all ministers for gracing this important event by delivering virtually their inspiring remarks at the opening session of the Inalak Business Forum and to Minister Masudi for launching later on the digital platform to facilitate the interactions between businesses from Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean. Let me thank all of the ambassadors for making their efforts to attend this event, both in person here, as well as virtually, and extending my most sincere appreciation to all speakers whom participating both virtually and also in person. This is I think what the new normal is all about. This is the new normal which allow us to start the concrete activities to support economic recovery, but at the same time, ensuring the health and safety of all of us. As we are progressing to address the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen the beginning of the rebound of the economic growth in some countries, including also in Indonesia, especially in the third quarter of this year. Our contraction in the second quarter was 
32%. But in the third quarter, it was rebound to 3.49%. And we are optimistic that the situation is getting better as well in the fourth quarter, in the last quarter. For Indonesia, agriculture and government spending contributed to the growth. During the pandemic, we have seen an increase of Indonesian exports to some markets, especially major markets in many countries. Although we have to admit that the foreign direct investment inflow is still very slow. To support the economic recovery, the government implemented a number of initiatives, including also enacting legislation on job creation, continue ease of doing business, as well as infrastructure development here in Indonesia, to facilitate safe essential travels, as Minister alluded to before. We also have developed travel corridor arrangement with some countries, hopefully, we will be able also to conclude with all of the 10 ASEAN member countries during the ASEAN, upcoming ASEAN summit. It is within this context and based on the achievements we have made last year, the Inalak Business Forum 2020 is organized. Last year, business deal agreed during the event amounted to 33.12 million US dollars, and we also have commitments of investments amounted to billions of US dollars over the period of five years, especially in the mining sectors. We are hoping that the potential business deal we can achieve during this year in Alak Business Forum could be double as compared to last year. The number may still be moderate, but the most important thing is the interactions, as what Minister Retno Masudi mentioned earlier, we have facilitated, which hopefully will improve not only better understanding, but also most importantly, concrete business deals between the businesses in Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as Indonesia. Understanding each other better is very key. I know that in the past, most of the businesses in Indonesia, and as well as Latin America, when we see each other, what we see is only distance, so far away. But I think since the organization of this business forum last year, we came to better understanding that the potential is very big for the businesses of the two countries. The distance should not be also a problem, as Minister mentioned earlier about the digital economy. As the largest economy, of more than 3 trillion US dollars in ASEAN, Indonesia offers many opportunities. But at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, 33 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, is a region with a total GDP of 5.71 trillion US dollars. If we look at the statistic on international trade, as Minister Retno alluded to before, it is still very small. But I think we should keep our optimism high. We should be creative in helping to promote the trade interactions between Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean. Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, the second Inalak Business Forum is attended. Of course, you cannot see all 400 of them, but 400 virtually and also in person here, because we're also very aware of the needs to keep distance as well as to maintain the safety of all of the participants. So we have 400 participants registered in this second Inalak Business Forum. And we are so glad that although we, the only challenges we are facing is only different time uh, zones. We are now in the morning, our colleague in Latin America in the evening. And later on tomorrow, we are in the evening, our colleague in Latin America in the morning. So it should not be really a big deal, not really a big constraint for us. The Inalak Business Forum digital platform was officially, will be officially by Minister Retno Masudi provide information on Indonesia's potential export products. 
clean and clear investment projects offered in 11 provinces in Indonesia. This platform could facilitate 24-7 interactions and virtual meeting place for businesses in Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean. The platform will be expanded further in terms of the number of the export products, investment opportunities, information, and everything that will enable the businesses to interact through this virtual means. Many concrete deliverables will also be signed during this event. And also it's amazing. So we just keep on our finger crossed that everything will be smooth because this is virtual. Our colleague in Mexico is also on standby. We are also here attending the events. Our colleague all over the Latin American Caribbean and also Indonesia is watching virtually. So we hope that everything will be very smooth and we really appreciate your support in organizing this event. To conclude, let me convey my sincere appreciation and gratitude to all of the ambassadors whom I met for the first time in person. Although we met before virtually, we would like also to thank the Ministry of Trade especially the minister himself, who is very committed to support this, and also our governor of the central bank, the chairman of the Indonesian Investment Coordinating Board, is not able to participate in person or virtually because he's now on the move, traveling, trying to bring investment to come to Indonesia. Our uh, Indonesian Exim Bank, Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Latin America Chamber of Commerce in Singapore, and also our colleagues who are, who are trying their effort to come to attend uh, this important event. I also wish to thank all of the distinguished panelists, moderators, and all of the team that have been helping us to make this event possible. So once again, Thank you, and I hope that even during the pandemic, we will certainly be able to contribute in a concrete ways on enhancing the bilateral cooperation, the bilateral business interactions between Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you very much. Distinguished caballeros, damas y caballeros, ahora invitamos al ministro de Comercio de la República de Indonesia, Agus Suparmanto. Por favor, señor Agus Suparmanto. His Excellency. Ministro Secretary General of Central American Integration System, His Excellency Address uh, Alaman Jafala, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Chile, His Excellency Francisco Bustelo Bonasso, Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Central Oriental Republic of Uruguay, Her, Excell Her Excellency Ibu Ratno, Marsudi, Indonesian Minister for Foreign Affairs. His Excellency, Bapak Fahlur Razi, Indonesia Minister for Religious Affairs. His Excellency, Bapak Ferry Wargio, Governor of Bank of Indonesia. Honorable Irwinla Rokyu, Secretary General of CARICOM, Distinguished Head of Delegation, Senior Official, Business Leader and Entrepreneur. 
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all of you. First of all, uh, kindly allow me to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic Indonesia for having me today and to congratulate its success uh, in organizing the Indonesia Latin America the, and the Caribbean or in a like business forum. This forum is very important as one of the effort to increase trade relation between Indonesia and countries in Latin America and the Caribbean region. I am delighted to be here and I am honored to deliver remarks. I could sense the enthusiasm to discuss ways to enhance the mutual cooperation between Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start by highlighting some point of my remark today. My first point is about recent update on trade, especially those of Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean region. Then about pandemic effect on global trade. And last is about Indonesian government action in improving and strengthening the trade cooperation between the two regions. Indonesia main trade partner are China, which is contribute 18%, followed by the US 12%, European Union 8%, Japan 8%, India and Singapore around 6% respectively. Despite uncertainty as major trading country fall into trade tension and begin creating some adverse impact on the others. Fortunately, Indonesia is able to maintain the, its economic growth, Latin America and the Caribbean region, one of Indonesia's most promising partners. Therefore, I believe that strengthening the collaboration between us is one of the best ways for us to reap the benefit of trade openness. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, uh, during this pandemic, the global economy and trade are slowing down. On one hand, Indonesia trade balance in January, September 2020 is experiencing a surplus of 13.51 billion US dollar. In this period, Indonesia export decreased by 5.8% year on year, while import dropped by 18.1% year on year. On the other hand, trade figures between Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean region does not reflect this. In January and August, to August 2020, the visit for Indonesia was recorded at uh, 1.6 billion US dollar. Market share of Indonesia product in the region was only around 0.40%. In the region, total import for from the world. Indonesia export various kind of goods, commodities to Latin America and the Caribbean region, consisting of automotive and its component, vegetable, fat and oil, rubber and rubber product, footwear and paper and paper product. The main export destination country are Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Argentina, and Haiti. Based on our analysis, we understand that even though Latin America and Caribbean region passed the trade potential for Indonesia up to 944.5 billion US dollar, in reality, Indonesia export to region was only around 3.8 billion US in 2019. Of course, uh, in order to embrace this opportunity, we need to explore the means that are necessary by engaging one another to in forum like this. Excellency and ladies and gentlemen, in response to the pandemic, I humble explore that we all should work together in turning this moment of crisis into opportunity. We also realize that it will take various action and innovation to gain benefit from the, the opportunity offered by the Latin America and the Caribbean market. Let me briefly share of the result of the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on global trade and some of its uh, mitigation. First, uh, changing in the global trade uh, pattern in result of disrupt supply and demand chains, the prohibition of uh, 
export and import of some food and health commodities and disturb at the center of global supply chain in China, the US and Germany. Increasing trend of protection that is adopted by several country. Trade cooperation did not function actively, effectively during the pandemic. Looming threat and of global economy recession. In order to encourage the private sector and the public sector to some extent to seize the opportunity dawning during the, this pandemic. Ministry of Trade of the Republic of Indonesia has issued a number of strategy policy. We hope that this strategy would stimulate business to survive and even grow. In addition, the government of Indonesia is continuing to establish trade and uh, agreement with the country and the uh, origin, including Latin America and the Caribbean. Currently, Indonesia has some strategy trade agreement underway between Latin America and the Caribbean country. Namely, Indonesia-Chile SEPA trade in goods concluded in 2018. Indonesia-Chile, uh, Indonesia Mark uh, Kusser scooping paper proposed uh, August 2020. Indonesia Peru FTA finished uh, 2017. Indonesia Colombia PTA ongoing. Indonesia Ecuador established WGTI 2018. The main objective of this uh, agreement are to bring economic relation to a higher way uh, and a higher level by reducing the barrier and expanding economic relation through trade uh, partnership. To promote uh, economic growth and equitable economic development through this, uh, the creation of new opportunity for worker and businesses, and also improve the standard of living of people on both country. To assist in uh, the expansion and development of world trade under the multilateral trading system, which is embodied of, uh, in Macares Agreement on establishment of the World Trade Organization. Through this forum, I would like to invite business people from uh, both parts uh, of the world to work together on exploring business potential, transforming them into business outcome. I would also encourage you to take advantage uh, from the Indonesian Ch Chile Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. It is my sincere hope that uh, increased trade while Chile and the completion of other trade negotiation with partners in Latin America and the Caribbean region will be able to become gateway for broader trade cooperation in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, to accelerate economy recovery post COVID-19 pandemic, extraordinary step are urgently needed. Acceleration, innovation, and collaboration are required to survive in this extraordinary situation. One of our means in our path of recovery is to organize our annual agenda, the Trade Expo Indonesia virtually this year. I therefore kindly invite you to all visit the 35 35th uh, Trade Expo Indonesia scheduled uh, tomorrow from 10 to 16 uh, November 2020 to see glimpses uh, of the best Indonesia product. We will display various products and services using virtual booths, booths, interactive and exchange between buyer and seller, business forum, business consultation, and business matching. All of it uh, conduct virtually and free of charge to you uh, to attend as long as you are registered. So please uh, mark your calendar. It is indeed a great uh, pleasure uh, for us to welcome you uh, at the Trade Expo Indonesia Virtual Exhibition 2020. In addition, I gladly inform you that we will also participate in the Expo 2020 Dubai, which is will be become a platform for Indonesia to introduce ourselves to the citizen of the world. Through this event, uh, we will display Indonesia potential in trade, 
investment and tourism sector as well as our culture to million of visitors from around the globe. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, concluding my session, let me lead in trade the number of important things. Even though the pandemic is still uh, ongoing, we have uh, arrived in era where digitalization has become part of everyday life. Therefore, the geographic constraint that separate our two regions would not longer be is an issue. Today, we are in the world uh, where tasks are fragmented around the globe, each will a certain focus. This is why we need to work together as partners to expand our businesses. I strongly believe that in achieving a great and beneficial cooperation between Indonesia and 33 countries in the Latin America and the Caribbean region, today forum will become one of the steps needed to make Indonesia and Latin America and the Caribbean region flourish. We could grow stronger only if we work together. We wish you all a fruitful and very successful business forum. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may we now kindly invite the Minister for Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, His Excellency Farul Razi, to deliver his remarks. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Her Excellency, Indonesian Foreign Minister, Ibu Retno Masudi, His Excellency, Indonesian Minister of Trade, Bapak Agus Suparmanto, His Excellency, Governor of Bank Indonesia, Perry Wardio, His Excellency, <coughs> Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chile, Andres Alaman Zafala. His Excellency, Uruguayan Foreign Minister Francisco Bustillo Bonasso. His Excellency, CARICOM Secretary General Irwin Larocque. His Excellency, SICA Secretary General Vinicio Cerejo. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let us express gratitude to Allah Almighty for all His blessing so that today, we can get along with each other, even though some of us only through virtual meeting. For Muslim friend, hopefully, prayer and greeting goes to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Epiphany to all the world. On behalf of the Ministry of Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, I warmly welcome the signing of the MOU on Halal Padak Assurance between the Government of Indonesia and the Government of Chile, which will be held in between the INA Large Forum this year. The, minister, the minister, Ministry of Religious Affairs commit to support global, global cooperation on Halal Padak. Shin, we have to realize that Halal Indonesia for the world community requires cooperation and synergy between all global halal stakeholders. I am sure the signing MOU can strengthen the synergy, bring Indonesia and Chile become important player in global halal market. We see that high desire in bullion in building the halal global industry. I identified up to now there are 73 halal institutions from various countries eager for cooperation with Indonesia. Fortunately, that Chile is the first to sign this MOU today. 
I congratulate the government of Chile and hope this quintessential collaboration will increase the benefit commensurate for both parties. I hope through this MOU may increase transaction of halal product between the two countries. Further than, further than that, it may continue in growing up and strengthen our cooperation to ICCPA, which has been started on 2017. Indonesia government seriously to develop halal industry. We provide some regulation to encourage halal product industry, such as law of halal product assurance, implementation of halal product assurance, and mandatory halal certified product. Domestically, we have collaborated with more than 120 institutions, such as university, state-owned enterprise, ministries, Islamic organization, industries, including some digital platform startup. Finally, I hope that the development of the Parker Tudiners Halal industry globally make a welfare for all citizens in the world. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, we would now like to invite the Governor of the Central Bank of the Republic of Indonesia, Honorable Peri Wargio, to deliver his remarks. Participant, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Indonesia, Latin America and Caribbean Business Forum 2020. It is an honor for Bank Indonesia, the Central Bank of Indonesia, to participate in this very important business forum. This is a testimony of our strong synergy between the government, the central bank, to coordinate the investor relation unit, both in the regional level, national level, and the global level, as a key success factor in promoting investment to Indonesia and showcasing the competitiveness of small medium enterprises in the global market. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia continues to be one of the best and promising investment destination in the world. In the past, present, and in the future. This is for the following five key reason. First, Indonesia offers promising economic growth with stable macroeconomic condition. After a relatively small contraction this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, recovery is underway with economic growth to rise to about 5% next year and continue to increase to around 6% over the next five years. Inflation is low, exchange rate is stable, and external resilience is strong. Prudent fiscal and monetary policies continue to underpin the sound macroeconomic environments. To boost economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemics, we provide large fiscal stimulus of 
6.3 percent and 5.5 percent of GDP this year and next year. We also provide large monetary stimulus through, among others, lowering interest rate, liquidity injection, or we call it quantitative easing of about 4 percent of GDP, and relaxing prudential regulation to support bank lending to business. Once the recovery is back on track, we will gradually unwind this stimuli and swiftly return to the long-standing prudent fiscal policy of no more than 3% of GDP deficit and prudent monetary policy for securing low inflation and stable aging rate. Second, Indonesia has a strong commitment for structural reform to boost our sustainable economic growth. The recent enactment of the job creation law is a clear testimony of this strong commitment. I reckon Indonesia is one of the very few countries that introduce very bold structural reforms at the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. The new law provides swift reforms to streamline investment and business processes, bureaucratic administration, and strategy for manufacturing and natural resource downstreaming, integrating local and global supply chains, as well as boosting small and medium enterprises development. SMEs are the backbone of Indonesia economic development with about 64.2 million units across Indonesia, employing about 117 million of Indonesian laborers and contributing to around 61.1% of the GDP. We have strong conviction that the new job creation law will attract sizable investment domestic and overseas, including from you. Third, Indonesia continues to offer large and promising infrastructure investment, both at the national and regional level, from provinces and municipalities. I am happy to see the involvement of Bank Indonesia Investment Relation Units to have the promotion of regional investment projects, which include a number of sectors, infrastructure, logistic, property, manufacturing, tourism, and transportation, as well as to showcase Indonesia small and medium enterprises product. Four, we accelerate financial deepening to lend support for increasing needs of financing for Indonesia investment. This includes the issue of green investment such as the green support. The government of Indonesia has successfully issued the global green support three times since 2018, with a total issuance of 2.75 billion US dollar, of which it was offered Supply. We also promote the implementation of local currency settlement framework, among others with the, with the Japan, China, Malaysia, and Thailand, in which local currencies of both countries are used for settlement of bilateral trades and direct investment. Fifth. Indonesia is accelerating digitalization throughout of our economy, large and small, for the new engine of promising Indonesia economy. This is in line with the President Joko Widodo's digital transformation of five agenda to accelerate digital infrastructure and access, clear roadmap for strategic sectors, national data center, digital human resource 
skills as well as regulation and financing scheme. Bank Indonesia is proud and have a strong commitment for this digital transformation through the implementation of our Indonesia Payment System Digitalization Blueprint 2025 that we already successfully launched in May of 2019 last year. Our blueprint aims at integrating national digital economic and finance, especially those of small medium enterprises and retail payments through among others national campaign of QR quick response Indonesia standard for promoting easy transaction among the merchant of those SME and retail payments accelerating digital open banking interlinking of those open banking digital banking with fintech developing Bank Indonesia fast retail payment, which is will be 24 7 in real time, payments data center, as well as payment system regulatory reform. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, this is five key reasons for investing in promising Indonesia economy nationally as well as in many regions of Indonesia. We thank you for your participation in this Indonesia, Latin America and Caribbean Business Forum 2020. And we invite you to serve the best Indonesia products at www.inna. Like this, come once again. Invest in promising and rewarding Indonesia, and use Indonesia product. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we now kindly invite the Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chile, His Excellency Andres Alaman Zawala, to deliver his remarks. Thank you. Mrs. Redno Marsudi, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, for your kind invitation to present my remarks to the audience of the second meeting of the Indonesia Latin America Business Forum 2020. Let me firstly congratulate you for the organization of this important event. The fact that you are carrying out this project despite the pandemic shows the commitment of Indonesia to strengthen relations with our region. Secondly, I would like to highlight the importance of the Indo-Pacific region on the economic and political field. More than half of the world population lives around the Indian and the Pacific Oceans, and the region accounts for almost half of the world's GDP. This is certainly a remarkable fact. Thirdly, we have learned from the extensive use of technology and, of course, of COVID-19, that the people are linked. So the only way to move forward is to diversify our economies and make the world more resilient. Trade is probably one of the most important tools at our disposal to revitalize our economies and to achieve a steady national growth. In this sense, we must strengthen the mutual involvement of our private sectors and promote the creation of links between them. The more we can build together, the better will be for our countries. Indonesia and Chile have been friends and partners for 55 years. We have had a harmonious relation based in common values and the sharing of perspectives in a number of fields, both bilaterally and in the multilateral sphere. Over the last decades, 
Chile has been committed to free trade and a multilateral system based on rules, to overcome obstacles to trade and investment, we have also tried to stand by the highest environmental and social standards, such as climate protection, transparency, and intellectual property. Thus, we have built a strong network of free trade agreements covering almost 86% of the world population. And we are pleased that Indonesia has recently joined this network by signing the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, the first one signed with a Latin American country. Our authorities have been working closely with Indonesian explorers to facilitate uh, the market access to products such as pineapples, coconuts, and bananas, among others. In this sense, events such as the Indonesia Latin America Business Forum 2020 are of paramount importance to the promotion of trade and investment. I am certain that this forum will strengthen the mutual awareness of our business communities and will become a reference to our business persons, both men and women. Dear Minister, I want to take advantage of this opportunity to introduce you to the Asia South American Digital Gateway, a project that Chile has launched and seeks to be the first in its kind to directly link the territory of Asia in Oceania and the South American continent through a new high-speed fiber optic submarine cable. This project will make Chile the digital gateway between Asia and South America. This unprecedented advance will create opportunities for new technology companies that look to invest not only in Chile, but in the entire Southern Cold. We hope this will create great opportunities for our countries and our people, putting ourselves at the forefront of the digital era. I wish you, Minister, the greatest success in this endeavor, and I assure you that the Government of Chile and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that I lead will work hard to promote regional trade and develop ties of friendship among business persons and investors, which will enhance our mutual dependence and understanding. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, now we kindly invite the Secretary General of Central American Integration System and the President of Guatemala from 1986 to 1991, His Excellency Vinicio Cerezo, to deliver his remarks. Good morning to all the participants of the Latin American and Caribbean Business Forum 2020. A special greeting to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Mrs. Redno Marsudi, whom I congratulate for the organization of this important strategic space, which seeks to strengthen economic relations between Indonesia and the countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. Likewise, I would like to extend a cordial greeting to the Honorable Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Chile and Uruguay, to the officials of the Republic of Indonesia, the Secretary General of CARICOM, and all the distinguished guests. It is a pleasure to greet you from Central America, the great natural bridge between the two American subcontinents, between the two oceans, and now of the Central American people with the world. And particularly, it is a pleasure to greet you from the Central American Integration System, SICA, which is integrated by the states of Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and the Dominican Republic, eight countries that share the same vision for development, using the regional integration as the strategic instrument to achieve it. At this time, we are facing, like everyone else, the effects of the world's pandemic in the recent history of humanity, the coronavirus, now added up to the impact caused by tropical depression ETA affecting approximately 3 million Central Americans. Our heart and solidarity are with those who suffer. But in this new emergency, as well as in our response, 
to the pandemic, the Central American region has decided to face these challenges jointly with the use of collective intelligence and by joining efforts to have better results. Our interdependence forced us to give global responses to global challenges. In this sense, joining efforts between our nation is extremely important, used as Indonesia has done it with the rest of the countries of Southeast Asia. I highlight here the integrationist spirit of Indonesia as founder of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, with whose Secretary General I held a meeting last year at the United Nations, seeking to define a roadmap on cooperation issues for enhancing the economic development of our countries and in order to work on issues that involve disaster risk management and plastic waste management. That's why I have long insisted on the strategic importance of Asia Pacific relations, especially with the prospect of expanding our markets and strengthening trade from region to region. In Central America, we have an enormous economic potential that we can leverage to become the next, next development pole in Latin America and the Caribbean. Our geographical position provides us with a privileged location for global trade through the Panama Canal. In total, the eight SICA countries add up 29 airports and 47 seaports, with all the potential to become the next world-class platform for cargo and passenger mobility. We also represent the fourth largest economy in Latin America with a joint GDP of more than $360 million and a growth rate of 4.1% between 2015 and 2019. We have the first regional electricity market, which has an electric interconnection line, CEPAC, with about 1,800 kilometers of extension from Guatemala to Panama. We have a population of more than 61 million inhabitants and a demographic bonus that will be available until 2045. In terms of the demographic size of the Latin American and Caribbean markets, the populations of Central America and the Dominican Republic ranks third only after Brazil and Mexico. As a mega diverse region in the world, we hold in 1% of the planet's territory, a 12% of the world's biodiversity did give us a great opportunity to position ourselves as a tourist multi-destination, benefiting from our rich biodiversity, climate, hydric resources, and all our rich historical cultural heritage. Our integration process, the most, most successful in the development world, has a total of 34 observers to date who support the regional development initiatives and whose solidarity has been even more present in this time of emergency due to the pandemic. That puts in particular relevance to this space in an era of globalization and at a historical turning point, we see Indonesia as an important strategic partner for the region, as well as the rest of the ancient countries. Our regions, our regions share several similarities and that is the basis for the strengthening of our political and commercial relations. Trade relations between the Sika countries and the Asian countries have increased steadily, particularly with Indonesia, where our imports increased by 60% between 2008 and 2018. Therefore, the deepening of cooperation and trade and investment ties can be beneficial for strengthening the economic development of both regions. Southeast Asian countries have a strong experience in the development of infrastructure and logistics, which can help as a guide for Central America and the Dominican Republic. Apart from that, with the technological advances achieved in the countries of Southeast Asia, it is possible to establish cooperation programs between the universities of the region and the technology centers of Indonesia for the creation of training 
teaching and technology transfer centers. Our experience allows us to have a mobility and logistic framework policy, which allows us to solidify the intra-regional market that currently generates that the not inconsiderable sum of $10 billion in commercial exchange, something extremely relevant that, that by including the construction of the first flight highways, a regional train throughout Central America and the strengthening of short distance maritime transport will create the conditions to solve our logistical problems, which will be, will be a great incentive for investment in the region. We are strengthening the custom union. There are significant advances between Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, which allow us to spend from 15 hours to 15 minutes in time at the border. And we are convinced that it will be soon be extended to the entire region. One of the central issues to enhance this relationship may be the consolidation of trade agreements between Indonesia and the SICA members countries to provide an institutional framework that works towards a, towards a better coordination and complementary between our political, economic, and social institutions. In the same way, we see an enormous potential for the member countries of SICA and Indonesia to strengthen their participation in global value chains to facilitate the transfer of technologies and promote the innovations in necessary to achieve a successful productive transformation. Ultimately, the opportunities are huge and time will not be enough to present everything on which we could work together. You can find a really reliable partner in Central America who is willing to contribute to the joint development of our people. I want to conclude my intervention not without first, first thanking you again for the invitation to this forum, wish you the best to, of success in the following se sessions and reiterate you a conviction of my own that takes greater relevance given the current context. History has allowed us to experience this moment for a reason, for the opportunity to transform realities, realities that allow us to build a new page in the history of humanity with a more inclusive, equitable, and sustainable vision where we leave no one behind. Let us remember that nobody is safe alone and that only together we can move forward. Thank you very much for this invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, we now kindly invite the Vice Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Oriental Republic of Uruguay as the President Pro Tempore Mercosur, Her Excellency Carolina H. Batie, to deliver her remarks. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Retno Marsudi, Ambassadors and Representatives, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Government of Indonesia for inviting us to the Indonesia Latin American and the Caribbean Business Forum 2020 in our capacity of Presidency Pro Tempore of Mercosur. For several years, Mercosur has been aiming to get closer to the Southeast Asia region. Our ongoing trade negotiations with Singapore and the recently agreed terms for our trade negotiation with Vietnam are good examples of it. Being Mercosur, the fifth economy of the world, and Indonesia, the largest economy of its region, it is natural for our countries to be highly interested in deepening the mutual relationship and to explore the great potential it represents not only in trade but in all areas. Indonesia's continuous economic growth with an emerging middle class will increasingly demand high quality food products. Mercosur, as a bloc, is one of the biggest food suppliers of the world. Our stability, wide experience, and sustainable production practices 
make us a perfectly suitable commercial partner to cover such growing demand in Indonesia. Mercosur and Indonesia together comprise a market of more than 500 million people and a GDP of $3.5 trillion. The benefits of a possible trade agreement between our countries will be countless. From the most basic benefit of tariff reductions to a better market access conditions in, in a matter of rules of origin, technical barriers to trade, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and trade and sustainable development, among others, benefiting not only our big enterprises, but also the small and medium ones that need it the most. Excellencies, in these days, when, our, when uncertainty preponderates, Mercosur is more committed than ever to expand its trade agreements network with key and relevant partners, such as Indonesia. In the understanding that by doing so, we contribute not only to its own growth and development, but also to its partners. We must use international trade and cooperation as fundamental tools to fulfill the responsibility we have to boost our economies and bring prosperity to our people. Uruguay and all Mercosur countries are ready and willing to assume our share in such responsibility. And we strongly believe that it, only, that it is only possible through a joint and hard work. To conclude, I wish you all a very successful successful and fruitful forum. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would also like to invite the Vice Minister 2 of State-Owned Enterprises of the Republic of Indonesia, His Excellency Kartika Wirjo Atmojo, to deliver his remarks. Distinguished participants of Inalat Business Forum, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning from Jakarta, Indonesia. My name is Kartika Wiranojo. I'm the first minister of the Ministry of State and Enterprise of Indonesia. My minister, Eric Tohir, uh, sends his apologies since he cannot present himself today. So please allow me to read out his remark for this fine occasion. It is with great pleasure to welcome all of you to witness the signing of a memorandum of understanding between Sarina, a state owned enterprise pioneering in modern retail business in Indonesia and B3 AG, a leading international duty-free and travel business company. Sarina, which is the first modern retail and shopping center in Indonesia, was established and constructed in 1962. It began operation in 1966, and during that period, it was an iconic building symbolizing modernity and internationalism. The spirit remains important today, whereby Sarina is now undertaking a rigorous business and brand affirmation to keep up with the dynamics in the market. Sarina is also seeking for business opportunities that promise sustainable growth. In doing so, Sarina is eyeing international markets through the establishment of half in Indonesia and Indonesian corners. This, as we have been told, are the foundation of the MOU between Sarina and Dufri. Sarina has taken a leap towards our vision for SOE to go global. Sarina has strategically managed to partner with Dufri that has already had presence in more than 63 countries for its premium duty-free and duty-paid outlets at airports and downtown or city centers. Through this business partnership, we hope that Dufree will bring in the knowledge in travel retail business to bring Sarina to the next league of duty-free and retail company in the global market, starting from the Indonesia market. We also hope that this partnership could also be the channel to showcase Indonesia high-quality SME products to be available for the international markets. Indonesian product or brand presence in Dufree global market will be well created. As for Sarina, it will bring its domestic value chain and market dynamic to enrich different establishment in Indonesia. This is a true reciprocal benefit for both company to earn. Again, on behalf of shareholders and government of Indonesia, I would like to congratulate Sarina and Dufri for this undertaking and look forward for the implementation of this MOU soon and greetings for all Idalak Business Forum participants. Thank you and very good morning. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the main agenda. 
grand launching of Inalak Business Forum Digital Platform. We will now witness the grand launching of Inalak Business Forum's digital platform, which will be broadcasted from Nusantara Room at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. Republic of Indonesia will now open the Inalak Business Forum's digital platform website. As a way of adaptation in doing business amidst this pandemic, Inalak Business Forum is facilitated by a digital platform www.ina-lag.com. The digital platform has several features. Online product showcase. Currently there are 223 companies that have joined as exhibitors and 123 as visitors. This feature is also equipped with chat box and appointment request button so business people can establish contact with each other. It also has online directory of investment projects. There are 108 ready to offer investment projects shown from 10 sectors and 11 provinces in Indonesia. Appointment on virtual one-on-one -on -one business meeting where exhibitor as well as visitor can establish an appointment to conduct business meeting. There is also business forum events and news features which will be regularly updated. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed to the next agenda. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed with the launching of Indonesia Colombia Joint Issue of Stamps. The Joint Issue of Stamps is part of the commemoration of the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Indonesia and Colombia. For the launching of the Joint Issue of Stamps, we kindly invite to come to the stage. His Excellency, Ambassador Nura Swajaya, Director General for American and European Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency, Ambassador Juan Camilo Valencia, Ambassador of the Republic of Colombia to the Republic of Indonesia. Honorable Mr. Nezar Patria, Director of Institutional Affairs of PT POS Indonesia. Also joining virtually, Mr. Iksan Baidirus, Director of Postal Affairs of the Ministry of Communications and Informatics of the Republic of Indonesia. Apart from the launching of joint issue of stamps, we will also witness the agreement signing and announcement ceremony. First, the announcement ceremony of the MOU between the Indonesian Hotels and Restaurants Association, or PHRE, and the Peruvian Association of Hotels, Restaurants and Related Establishments, or AORA. We can invite to come to the stage His Excellency, Ambassador Julio Cardenas, Ambassador of the Republic of Peru to the Republic of Indonesia. And Honorable Mr. Hariadi Sukamdani, Head of the Indonesian Hotels and Restaurants Association. Next is the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Ministry of Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chile on cooperation in the quality assurance of halal products. We kindly invite you to come to the stage, His Excellency Ambassador Gustavo Ayares, 
Ambassador of the Republic of Chile to the Republic of Indonesia. And Honorable Mr. Sukoso, the head of Halal Product Assurance Agency. Also joining us from Mexico City, the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding between PT Sarina Persero and Dufri International AG and Grupo Industrial Omega SA de CV, Mexico which will be virtually signed by Honorable Mrs. Fetty Quartati, President Director of PT Sarina Persero, Honorable Mr. Rodolfo Velasco from Dufri AG, Honorable Mr. Julian Alexander Joseph Holzer Martinez, the President Director of Grupo Industrial Omega SA de TV, and virtually joined by his and also witnessed by Ambassador Chepi T. Wartono, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Mexico, Belize, El Salvador, and Guatemala, who will be joining us from Mexico City. And it is also virtually joined by His Excellency Kartika Wiryo Atmojo, Vice Minister to of State-Owned Enterprises of the Republic of Indonesia. Excellencies, Honorables, please sign the documents. <laughs> Colombia join issue of stamp. Thank you. Excellencies, honorables, please show the MOU between the Indonesian Hotels and Restaurants Association and the Peruvian Association of Hotels, Restaurants and Related Establishments. Please show the MOU between the Ministry of Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Chile on cooperation in the quality assurance of halal products. Thank you. And honorables, please show the MOU between Peter Saria Percero and Dufri International Agent Grupo Industrial Omega SA, the GV. Please be seated.
Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed with virtual signing ceremony, which will be held virtually in Jakarta and Mexico City. First is the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding on the Cooperation for Product Development and Nuclear Technology Application between PT Inuki Persero and Inin, Mexico. And for this signing, we kindly invite Honorable Mr. Bunyamin Nur, the Director for Promotion of PT Inuki Persero. And joining virtually from Mexico, MNC Jose Ignacio Tendia del Pozo, the Director for Technological Research of Inin in Mexico City. And second, the signing ceremony of the Memorandum of Understanding on Collaborative Business Arrangements between Camco Rattan Nebels, Mexico, and NASA Art Furniture, Indonesia. For this, we kindly invite Honorable Mr. Iman Rahman, the CEO of NASA Art Furniture. To be joined virtually by Mr. Rodrigo Gonzalez Medellin, the general manager of Camco Rattan Mabels in Mexico City. The signing will also be witnessed by Ambassador Chepi T. Wartono, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Mexico, Belize, El Salvador, and Guatemala, and also Dr. Javier Palacios, Director General of ININ from Mexico City. Excellencies, Honorables, please sign the documents. Honorables, please show the MOU on the Cooperation for Product Development and Nuclear Technology Application between PT Inuti and ININ Mexico. Also, the MOU on Collaborative Business Arrangements between Camcor at the Mabels, Mexico and Nazar Furniture, Indonesia. Thank you very much and please be seated. Congratulations for the signing of memorandums of understanding and also the launching of joint issue of stats. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding the opening session and proceeding to the panel discussions, we would like to invite to come to the stage for a photo session. His Excellency Murah Swajaya, Director General of American and European Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, and all ambassadors and heads of missions of Latin American and Caribbean embassies in Jakarta.
Excellency is honorable. We are preparing to take the photo. Two thumbs up for Inalat Business Forum 2020. Thank you very much, Excellencies, Honorables. Ladies and gentlemen, the photo session concludes the opening session of Inalat Business Forum 2020. We will now adjourn for 15 minutes for coffee break. We kind of invite you to enjoy the refreshment that is served at Ballroom 1. We kindly remind you to follow our official Instagram account at Inalat Biz Forum to see updates and documentation from today's event. Also, please do not forget to open the website, the digital platform of Inalat Business Forum. Thank you, and we will see you in 15 minutes for the panel discussions. <laughs>